We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. Hi folks, it's Rob the Robot here from the Adobe Education Team. Welcome to a Student Creativity Challenge from Adobe. If you haven't already, please access Adobe Express on a browser via express.adobe.com and log in via your school email to get full premium access. Here's your teachers for this session, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Abby Nelson. Thanks, Rob, and welcome to this Student Creativity Challenge focused on making infographics with Adobe Express. Hi, Abby. Hi, Tim, and welcome to everyone in the session today. We have over 600 students who have registered from 12 different schools. Yeah, it's wonderful to have so many schools, particularly so many students involved. Look, if you're a teacher watching this and you haven't registered your class in the past, well, you can do so for future lessons via adobe.ly slash student dash creativity dash challenges. And note that there is nothing you need to download to get started. All you need to do is just open up your favorite browser and type express.adobe.com into the address bar. Make sure you're logging in with your school account to get access to the full premium version with all of the images and template assets, as well as the extra storage. Now you may have noticed that we now have a new reimagined version of Adobe Express for you to enjoy. The new version features a brand new all-in-one multimedia editor and we'll be looking at a lot more in this session. But before we do, here is a quick clip from Dr. Tim explaining more. Adobe Express for K-12 schools is amazing. Lots of great new templates for posters, slide presentations and infographics specifically set up for students and teachers. Real-time collaboration is a feature. There are new ways of linking Photoshop and Illustrator to Adobe Express. And for Chromebook users, the new Adobe Express is a more seamless and accessible experience. But what I'm most excited about is the new Animate from Audio Quick Action and the new all-in-one multimedia editor that allows students to create virtually anything that comes to their imagination. Those of you working with iPads or other tablet devices, note that there will be an update to the Adobe Express app soon, later this year. So to make the most of this particular lesson, we do suggest that you use the browser through Safari on an iPad or Chrome on your Android tablet, or look, just find a laptop somewhere that's got a browser on it. Abby, can you please remind everyone how to log into Adobe Express? Excellent. So to log into your account, what you need to do, like I said before, is type express.adobe.com into the address bar in your favorite browser. And then you need to come into this screen and select continue with email. So just click on that there. And then you should add in your school email address into the email address bar, select continue. And then you'll need to select school account. Really, really important you do this. Mine might look a little bit different to yours because, of course, I'm not a student or a teacher in um, a school, but uh, just follow the prompts as they come through and then you'll eventually end up in the Adobe Express dashboard. Just note that if we're going too fast for you because we are streaming this, you can pause and you can play at any time and just be watching it at the speed that you'd like to watch it at. The theme for this session is about making infographics with Adobe Express. And here is a clip from Dr. Tim before he grew his beard, <laughs> explaining what infographics are and how they can be helpful in teaching and learning. Wikipedia defines infographics as graphic visual representations of information, data or knowledge intended to present information quickly and clearly. We see infographics all over the place. If you think about it, street signs are infographics. The sign on a toilet door is an infographic. Even billboards and other advertisements are a type of infographic because they generally feature visual representation of information quickly and clearly to get across a message. Infographics can improve learning by using images to enhance the human's visual ability to see patterns and trends. 
You've probably heard the saying, a picture tells a thousand words. Well, it's true. Our brain is hardwired to recognize and recall information through imagery much quicker than through reading text. In many subject areas, teachers and students are encouraged to communicate what can often be complicated content in a simple way. And doing so as an infographic can be really helpful. Right, let's start building an infographic using an Adobe Express template. Now, Abby, how do we look up templates with Adobe Express? Let me show you how to do that. So we're here on the Adobe Express dashboard. And what we need to do is select up the top where it says search everything and simply just type in infographic. And then you'll see lots of different options pop up that you can use to start getting um, started and start creating. These are all templates you can use. Actually, Abby, do you know what you, you've got there? See, on next to infographics, you've got templates with a um, drop-down arrow. You just want to hover your cursor over that. Let's go further up again, up to where you were before with the infographics. If you clicked on the All button, what's really interesting is anything that you have created that relates to infographics will appear. It might be your own personal infographic that you've created in the past it will be sitting there in your libraries. So it's worth noticing how we've got a filtering tool now that just filters out the things that you want. So at the moment, Abby's just looking for a template about infographics. So instead of all, she's going to be clicking templates and then she's already got infographics there and it just brings up the relevant things that you're looking for. Yeah, so many different options in the new Express. Now that we know how to find a template, let's jump in and have a look at which template we're going to work with. Absolutely. So many different options, Tim, to choose from. So it can feel a bit overwhelming, but just try to find one that you think really suits, you know, what you're looking for. For me, I want mine to be really simple, this infographic. So this one here, it looks like it will suit just fine. And I love the topic, yes. so it's perfect. Looks good. Excellent. So once you um, have selected your template and it's loaded into the editing screen, you can start making some changes. The first thing I want to do is I want to resize the actual canvas itself, the background, so it's a little bit wider to suit my needs. To do that, all you need to do is go to resize on the top left, select that, and then you can select a size that you think will suit you a little bit better. Of course, you can type in the dimensions if you want, but for me, a flyer, that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to select resize. You'll see it automatically just became wider. I didn't have to do anything at all. It just changed the size of the uh, creation itself. Now that it's at a size I'd like, I'm going to show you how to start editing some of the shapes and the images and the pictures that are within this creation. To start editing, what you need to do is make sure different elements aren't all grouped together. The reason they're grouped together is so that they can all move together at the same time. But we need to turn that off so that we can start editing single parts of the creation. So to do that, I just select where I want to edit, like I've done here, and I select on the left-hand side, ungroup. This will mean that the text and the image are now not grouped together so I can move them independently, which is what I want to do. Now that they're ungrouped, I want to change this because I want to make my infographic about dogs. So dogs facts or dog facts, I think I'll make it. And I can even start changing, you know, the, the shape and the size and how big that text is on the page. I can do the same thing with images as well or shapes. I can just click and drag and, and change the shape to how I think it should fit on the page. Abby, one all, of the requests yeah. that we had with the new version was whether people could collaborate with you in real time. Is that possible now? It is possible and it's really, really exciting, Tim. So to add someone to collaborate with you and build a creation with you at the same time, all you need to do is go up the top here. We've got the little person with the plus, select that. And then you can type in the email address of the person you'd like. And I can invite you to edit. And you'll get an email confirming that will come through that you are able to access this uh, piece of work to collaborate with me on. Excellent. I'm going to go and look at my emails now and uh, you keep editing and I'll, I'll come back to you. Excellent. Okay. The next thing I wanted to show everyone was how to change the colors of parts of the page. So if I select these paw prints, I can see that they're pink at the moment, but I'd like to change the color. So I just click on them, go to the left-hand side and you'll see the option to change the color of the fill. I want to change them to green. 
or perhaps even blue. I'm going to go blue. So I can select blue there. If not all of the options you'd like are available on the screen, you can select custom and you can create a different color that you'd like for uh, your shape or whatever it may be uh, to be. But I'm, I'm really happy with this color for now. So I'll quickly go in and change the other ones to match because that's the look I'm going for with this creation. Now that I've done that, I just want to show you a few other things around like moving text around and how, how to um, add more to your creation. You'll see here that this background dot and this text are grouped together. That's fine with me for, for the moment, but I just want to change where it sits on the page so I can easily do that. The same with the pink dot. As for this one down here, I don't really want this piece of text within this dot. So all I need to do as long as it's ungrouped, and remember to ungroup, you just circle, select what it is you want to ungroup, select ungroup. But this one is already ungrouped, so I'm all good to go. Is select that and then get rid of the text by just selecting the text. You'll see it highlight and then you can delete and just get rid of it just like that. I'm just going to interrupt for a second. I'm just going to share my screen just to show you something. So with my screen here, what I've done is... I use Firefox as my preferred browser and the collaboration tool isn't actually part of Firefox just yet. So I've had to go into Chrome and when I go into your stuff on the left-hand side in Chrome, there is all of my projects that I've been creating. But at the top right-hand corner is a little drop-down menu that says yours or shared with you. And when you click shared with you, I should be able to see your project and it's thinking about it. I think it's, here we go, it's coming up now. So if I click into that project now, and if you start sharing, we'll share your screen and we'll see yeah. what happens. I'm just going back into your screen now. And what you should start seeing is my, my cursor floating around your screen. There it is. there it is. You see that? Isn't that cool? So I'm just manipulating the puppy dog at the top right hand corner. And I'm doing that from my computer in a totally different place <laughs> while you're looking at your while we're looking at your computer so i'm going to keep playing in the background and you keep teaching away there abby <laughs> sure no worries so what i was doing before tim is i was removing the text and i wanted to replace it with a different image or piece of media so i'm going to show everyone how to do that you go over to the left hand side and i can see you editing my work which is sort of funny is i can select on elements Within elements, you'll see so many different images and um, well, stickers that you can add to your work. I can pick whatever I'd like from here, but what I might do is just type in dog to match my infographic. And I can see all of these really cute little stickers that I can add to my creation. Oh, I love this one. So I'm going to select that one and I might put that into my um, green blob but in backgrounds I can find all of these other options that I might like to add into my creation. Above elements you'll see text which is of course to add in text just like it says here dog facts and all you need to do is select add text and then you can um, add extra te um, text to your um, screen. And of course with infographics one of the most common shapes and pictures images that you use with infographics are arrows so I'm actually mm. going to go and do a search myself for different elements. And if I did a search for arrows, I wonder what would come up. Might get uh, oh, over a thousand different arrows. So I'm going to select oh. one now. And you can see the arrow is about to appear in Abby's screen any second now. It'll appear there because I've hey, brought it in. Cool. It's a little bit of a delay. Yeah. And we can emphasize certain parts of the screen and, of course, rotate the arrows around and, there's another really cool button um, at the top left-hand corner, Abby, just under the word icon there for you is the duplicate button. So if I wanted to, if you wanted to duplicate that arrow that I just created, maybe select that arrow that I just brought in and then yep. go to the duplicate button. It's now underneath the word image at the top left-hand corner. So a little um, two boxes with, there you go, you've done that. And now we've got a, a, a separate copy of it. There's, and you could do a right click. Oh, wow, there's so many options. You know, so there's much so many this. options with the new Express. It's crazy. It's amazing. Abby, I'm going, to, I'm going to take over and just show how to do a quick little video and turn this still image uh, infographic into an animated infographic. 
But is there anything else you wanted to quickly show while we're still in this mode? I just wanted to show one more thing quickly, and it's good we have all these arrows on the screen now because I can show it really easily. Obviously, this arrow is in front of the text, and that's not really what I want because you can't really read the text very well. So all you need to do to change this is you need to select what it is you want to change. You can right-click, and you can send it to the back, and you can send it behind whatever it's in front. You can also see on the um, right side is that there are all these different layers and this is the order in which things are placed. So you can play around with that too, but I think it's easier just to just select what it is that you want to change, right click, and then you can change where it is in terms of the layers on the page. So that's what I want such to show, a, Tim. Such a fun way of making infographics. Such a, such a fun tool to use in all sorts of subject areas. So Abby, I'm going to share my screen, which is obviously going to look very similar to yours. <laughs> Here we go. Well, now we're in mine. You can see all the arrow options that I was looking at before. You're going to see Abby's uh, cursor now floating around as I'm working here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner. Let's bring up my little screen pointer so you can see exactly where I'm referring to. And at the top right hand corner is a little add button. When you click add, you can actually go to this option here called create a video. And what I love about this is that it turns your still image into a potential moving image. And what will appear here is a timeline down the bottom. I'm going to go to this button that says edit timeline and hopefully that'll bring it up. Here we go. So we can now see a timeline. If I hit the play button, there's actually no animation that's happening at the moment. It's still like a still image, but there is a playhead that's playing through that still image. So do something really simple. I'm just going to grab this title dog facts. And I want it to animate in as the beginning of my little video. So as I select it, on the left-hand side, if I scroll down, I've got an option here to bring in some animation. Now, Abby, let's have a look at the in animation options. Which ones of these is a little bit of a delay that we've got at the moment here, but you're sort of seeing what they look like as I hover over them. Oh, have you yeah. got a favorite in animation? Oh, I in. like the bungee one because I think it's funny how it sort of jumps in. Pretty cool, isn't it? So I'm going to click on the bungee one and we can choose to have the change the duration, make it a little bit longer, choose the direction. I'll make it bungee in from the left. There we go. That looks pretty cool. And now when we hit the play button, we've got that animation happening and every element on your infographic can have its own animation. You can animate it in. While it's in, you can keep it animating as a looping animation and then you can decide to have it animate out of that particular scene as well i'll make it sort of drop out so now if i go to the play button we're animating in it's still moving while we're in the scene and then we get to the end of that scene it then drops out and this is where maybe we could bring in a video so it says add scene so if i click on add scene and the media button has three main tabs now. You can go to Adobe Stock Photos or your own photos. You can go to Adobe Stock Videos or bring in your own videos. And you go to Adobe Stock Audio or bring in your own audio or even do a voiceover recording. It really is an all-in-one multimedia editor that allows you to create anything that comes to your imagination. I was going to quickly preview this song here. Are you hearing that music, Abby? Is that coming through? No, I can't hear the no? music. I can only hear All you. Right. Yeah. It might be a little issue that we've got with our audio setup here, but that's how you can preview your songs. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs that you can preview under different themes like acoustic, background, blues, classical. Once you've previewed and you're happy with it, you click the button and that brings the soundtrack into your video. And now if I take the playhead back to the start and hit the play button, I'm hearing the music, but you're probably not at the moment because of the way <laughs> my audio We can is imagine it. <laughs> you can imagine it's sounding really cool. And then maybe I could bring in some video content to uh, go into my next scene of uh, maybe a puppy. Let's just see how many videos there are in Adobe Stock. Oh, 360 puppy videos. Getting a little, and it's looking for one that's got a bit of animation to it. That one's looking pretty animated. So if I click on that, it now appears in my next scene and I can make it bigger or smaller. And if I just go to the edge of it, I can trim it, make that whole video a little bit shorter. So we've got this part of the clip. 
and then I can add a whole lot more titles and special features to really make it my own clip. And when we're totally finished with our infographic, we can go up to the top right hand corner where we can download it as an MP4 video or we can share it and uh, share it online uh, through your Google Classroom, through your Microsoft Teams, or even share it to the open internet if the school has allowed you to do that. Some schools do, some schools don't. Abby, we're going to spend a bit more time on the video side of it in our next Student Creativity Challenge. But thank you so much for covering what we've covered so far on how to create a really cool infographic. It's going to go back to your screen. Was there anything else that you wanted to show us before we close up? Um, I'm trying to think. You've shown how to share. You've shown how to download. We know how to collaborate in that adding other people into our project. I guess the last thing would be even just changing the background color. And like everything in um Adobe Express, just select it and you'll find out all of the options that are available to you. But for the background, you will see that it's just up the top. And what you can do is just select and then you can change that color really, really easily. What you could also do is get a really big image and stretch it over the back of the canvas. There's so many options available to you. It's amazing. And just to give you a little teaser for our next creativity challenge, there's something else. You know, um, when you get a green screen and you can film yourself and then you can uh, key out the colour with some application so it's just you and you can create and generate any background. Well, you can do all of that with Adobe Express, but we're going to show you how to do that in the next Student Creativity Challenge. Exactly. All right, Abby, let's stop sharing our screens. And if you would like some more tutorials that relate to the new reimagined Adobe Express, please look up adobe.ly slash new dash express dash APAC. The next Student Creativity Challenge is on making powerful video stories with Adobe Express. And we'll be going live to air on Tuesday, the 31st of October, 2023 at 2 o'clock p.m. And of course, it'll be available on demand as soon as it's recorded. Yeah, thanks, Tim. And thanks, everyone, for being part of this Student Creativity Challenge. Um, here's Rob, Rob the Robot. Again, close the session. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye, everyone. Well, we do hope you've enjoyed this Student Creativity Challenge from Adobe. If we don't see you again at another challenge, we do encourage you to keep using Adobe Express and other Adobe software whenever you're creating a digital presentation for school, for your family, for friends, or just for fun. The more you use the tools, the better you'll get. Bye for now, and don't forget to keep being creative.